I feel like we've arrived at a very fascinating spot in the industry where things are less about breaking new ground most of the time and instead uh, refining and executing on really specific visions of existing ideas. Uh, great examples are the multiple great takes on the rat, the multiple great iterations of a tape echo or a plate reverb. And it's less so about creating the most complicated MIDI iterative version of that kind of thing. And instead much more focused on what is my vision for a specific version of this sound that doesn't exist in the industry right now? And how do we bring that to fruition? For things like delays especially, I am finding that seeing someone's really specific vision and somebody's really specific approach to a device is really more compelling than a wide feature set. Which brings us to our subject today, the Benson Delay, the first non-dirt pedal offering from Benson Amps up in Portland, Oregon, and a very strong entry into the delay wet effects modulation world for Benson. There should be an asterisk there considering Benson has also uh, developed an amazing spring reverb tank, but that's not a pedal, and this one is, and this thing sounds freaking great. So let's talk about the Benson Delay. It's based on the PT2399 Delay chip, and it is really, really well executed in this pedal. You have really great, well-balanced repeats. There's no tone knob, but I honestly don't miss it. Uh, you've got great clean repeats, um, kind of at noon and shorter, uh, but this thing also extends out to about 1250 milliseconds or about a second and a quarter. And as you push past that one second mark, this thing starts to get some real great overclocking sounds, really wonderful clock noise. And if you know me, you know I'm a huge sucker for clock noise in a delay pedal, especially when it's implemented well. And this is phenomenal. It is warm, it is gritty, it breaks apart in all the right ways. You have three different subdivisions for your tap tempo, quarter, dotted eighth and eighth, and you have three different modulation waveforms for your LFO speed and depth, a sine, a square, and the one that I switched to immediately and will never move off of for the rest of my life, a random LFO that just sounds great. There's a really interesting design choice in a lot of the parameters in this thing, and that is things become really extreme past the noon mark on any given knob. Uh, for example, mix is unity at noon, feedback begins to self-oscillate and run away at noon. The time makes that jump from clean, pristine repeats to progressively more aliasing and clock noise, once again, at and past about noon. I think the interesting thing there is everything kind of in that first half of each of these knobs is classically useful, practical, straightforward analog delay goodness. You can use anything in that LFO uh, rate and depth controls from zero up to about noon and not get overly comical, overly wonky and seasick. But all these knobs at and past noon become an entirely different device. There is different amounts of character that the self-oscillation takes on from noon onward. At and just past noon gets this slow churn of the delay, uh, like kind of feeding back on itself and breaking up. But at completely maxed out, it becomes this black hole of destroyed repeats just churning over very, very quickly. And it sounds different than just the slow build. Again, that time control becomes murky and lo-fi and broken and dusty sounding as you get way past that. You get uh, really, really bizarre, massive pitch shifts in that lo-fi or in the LFO section. However, when you go full wet on the mix and turn this thing into a lo-fi modulation device, especially if you take that time and take that to minimum and use this as a full wet modulator or some sort of chorus effect, if you've got that mix back a little bit to reintroduce that dry sound, those LFO speed and depth controls past noon become where all the best versions of murky lo-fi modulation movement exist as a dry tone modulator. 
there is basically two pedals in here a delay that exists south of noon on all the on all the parameters and an entirely different beast that exists past it and i think that's a really interesting approach to a delay pedal so let's go to our sound samples and let's listen to the benson delay so as always, before we get into our sound samples, let's go ahead and talk through our signal chain and the context we are working in. I am playing my Bunting Melody Queen T into the 29 pedals Yuna, the 1981 Inventions uh, LVL, the Kali 76 compressor by Origin FX, and the Benson preamp. From there, we go to the Benson Delay, the Strymon Big Sky, and out to our amplifier, which is a matchless Lightning 15 into the Universal Audio Aux box. Uh, the Aux is set up with the Ace Top cabinet. It's got a 57 and a 421 on the cone, uh, and this is what our dry tone sounds like. <laughs> Divide the Benson delay into three sections for these sound samples. Uh, section number one is going to be the overall control scheme of the unit itself. Section number two is going to be the Benson delay as appropriately a delay. And section three is going to be the Benson delay as a modulation device. Uh, so let's start things off by taking a look at the control scheme on the Benson delay. You of course have the really basic straightforward stuff. You have your mix your time and your feedback and your two band uh, control for your modulation engine, your LFO speed and your LFO depth. Um, you have your bypass on this side, your tap tempo on this side and the ability to press and hold it for oscillations. But you also have a couple of key sub menu control things that are very, very important to the functionality of the Benson delay. By pressing and holding the bypass switch for three seconds, and then pressing on the tap hold side, you can go into a submenu control like so. Those three flashes show us that we are currently in the uh, submenu control scheme. Uh, and now your bypass control, you can tap it and it will flash between one and three times giving you access to a sine wave, a square wave and a random LFO. So. Number one is going to be your sine. Number two is going to be your square. Number three is going to be your random LFO. Conversely, this tap side actually lets you access three different subdivisions. In that same way, tapping it while in this kind of submenu control system will give you access to a quarter note with one blank, dotted eighth with two blanks, and eighth notes with three blinks. So let's go ahead, cycle back over to dotted eighth because that's pretty much where I leave it. And then we'll cycle this one back to sign for now. You then press and hold that bypass again. Three blinks and we are back to normal functionality. Let's go ahead and get into the Benson delay as a delay itself. We have feedback down here at about nine o'clock. We have time and mix at noon. One of the things that I think is really, really beautiful about this delay is all of the parameters go really, really far, allowing you to use them in very, in very low uh, areas for really kind of conservative, kind of classically good delay parts, and then being able to turn them up for more exaggerated versions of themselves. It's the reason that we are not doing uh, mix time and feedback at noon. And that's because feedback at noon will actually already start infinitely repeating on itself. Let's go ahead and hear what the delay sounds like with our LFO completely taken out. And like I said, time at noon. Because this is a proper analog delay, the farther you stretch that time parameter, the more noise you're going to get. So let's go ahead and start things off with kind of min-maxing that time control.
And of course, you can get incredibly short, almost instantaneous repeats, which is great for that lo-fi section we're going to talk about later, uh, kind of as a like modulator. So you can get kind of into that like real-time modulation slapback area. As we wandered through that, let's turn that feedback up just so we can hear that really musical way in which these repeats uh, pitch shift as you adjust that time. I love it. It's so menacing. The circuit itself starts to get just a hair more white noise as you dig into this like kind of like almost overclocking sounds in the uh, in the Benson delay. You'll start to get into kind of some like lower fi delay lines. such a massive sucker for like well-tuned lo-fi clock noise in a delay when it's like really well executed. So like let's max out the mix and listen to kind of like a nice clean delay. It's dusty and old and broken and absolutely beautiful. The loss in there is very, very good. I'm really, really deeply pleased with it. Let's go back to a slightly cleaner delay. Uh, and let's take a look at this feedback control. There you go. One delay, one delay repeat. It's predictable, it's reliable. listen to those even at these low settings and this is what I was talking about like similar to how that time gets really lofty and wild when you really max it out the feedback on here goes from a single repeat
to more than two very, very quickly. To long washi repeats, like I said, very, very, very quickly. And at noon, we're already there. You're already at runaway oscillations. Uh, but what's really great about that is there is some compression innate to the circuit. Uh, I don't know if there's a built-in compressor in the chain in some capacity or if it just kind of like self-compresses by the merits of the design and the and the uh, chip being used, but you don't get that like destroyer amplifier thing. There's a lot of control to be had with that mix control versus some uh, runaway delays I have used over time where it really feels like those runaway repeats get really, really like overly loud too quickly. sure if you heard that the character of the runaway oscillation morphs from noon onward so it's not just about getting runaway oscillation but the way in which it kind of crumbles and decays on itself changes the further up you have that feedback <laughs> Versus. Yeah, there is a viciousness, a brokenness that kind of compounds on itself when you really max out that feedback. I I was a little kind of confused when I first used this. Literally the first time I ever plugged this in, I used it for a live set, actually. It was like the trial run for it, just out of the kind of dangerous curiosity of it all. And I was really taken aback by that noon feedback thing, but getting it home and into the studio and getting to know that character, there is something really amazing in being able to control not only how fast those buildups happen from noon onward and having a lot of granular control over the speed of that kind of like growing oscillation, but also the character, the kind of like just how broken do you want those repeats to sound being accessible across that 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 range is really really just kind of deeply fun so in that same way that time and feedback uh kind of have a lot of like extremeness at the far end of things i feel like the mix going from full dry to full wet is really great but i love how present the delay lines get early early on in that mix control cuz it's easy to pull down mix in a or delay repeats in a mix and be fine finding the right high balance can be very very difficult especially with a delay that doesn't have a tone knob like this and so i really do appreciate deeply the fact that you've got mm -hmm. 
They're kind of subtle stuff. Like even right there, that's like present enough for a rhythmic delay component in a mix. To get like a really great sounding delay with all three of those knobs at that same like comfortably below noon position. Especially with those super lo-fi delays. I think the benefit there, kind of having that unity right around this range, is because this thing has so many strongly practical uses as a chorus, as a lo-fi pedal, as kind of other non-traditional delay uh, options, which is really, really cool. Okay, we've reset to that kind of nice medium length delay. Mm -hmm. So we have our modulation still set as a sine wave as we did at the start of these sound samples. And we're gonna go ahead and bring in these speed and depth controls, which I think, again, extreme stuff happens up like this, up like here and above. And so what I really love is using it subtly as a delay, but again, cranking those features when you are using it as a modulation pedal. So modulation off. Let's turn that depth off so that you so that you can hear that difference. There is like instant shimmer there in a really cool way. Get 
very melty. That LFO depth gets really severe, which is going to be very fun when we uh, when we jump over to square waves. So obviously you can get into kind of chaotic stuff, but like I said, down here in the nice subtle space, you've got some great, great shimmery modulation. Okay, number two, we are now on square wave. The square wave is really fascinating. I think I like it most as a, again, a more subtle thing. This kind of like sharp shifts in modulation versus that kind of like sweeping up and down seasick thing that like chorus can do. Uh, or like a sine wave can do. Um, you can kind of aim for some theoretically quantized pitch jumps, but there is no demarcation on the pedal of where those might be, and they're fairly difficult to, to try to dial in. It's fun. I just, I don't know that I know how to like dial in that square wave thing for a kind of quantized jump thing, which would be really cool, but is also asking for a lot. Yeah, it just gets a little bit wonky. Yeah, it's all over the place. Uh, let's go to my favorite modulation engine, number three. Our random LFO. I'm always, it's always my favorite. Random LFOs are always my favorite ones.
Okay, and for the final section, let's go ahead and take a look at the Benson delay as a modulation device. Uh, we have everything kind of set up for base level, lo-fi, kind of like, I think in the manual, this is technically a setting here, and it's called lo-fi compression, and it's just a little bit of smushedness coming from the uh, delay circuit itself. Um, no modulation, no feedback, time at minimum, mix completely maxed out. It will darken up the signal, and so I'm actually, after I engage this, I'm going to turn on the harmonic filtering on the 29 pedals Yuna, uh, just to give you a compare and contrast, so that we just get a little bit of added clarity, uh, so that this lo-fi thing doesn't go full lo-fi, but only partial the way lo-fi. So here is our dry tone. <laughs> And here is our dry tone with that harmonic filtering enabled on the 29 pedals Yuna. Just add some jangle, add some added kind of like teeth to it by filtering a lot of like low mid content. You can hear that compression coming from the circuit already. And for context, with that harmonic filtering turned off our normal, t our normal tone, this would be the comparison. Still good. It's not losing all of that clarity, but... But I like that extra jangle going into this to give us a little bit more flexibility here, especially when it's full wet like this. And of course, the benefit here is we're still in that random LFO. Setting it subtle here is not going to do the same that it does for us on the delay. So we actually really want to crank that modulation when you're doing this kind of thing. filtering on the neck pickup too is really great for this as an act of really gentle very kind of like warped vinyl-esque sound
And of course, the beauty about that is it doesn't just have to be that. Like you can also take that and access that modulation engine, go back to that first one, our, our sine wave, make that a lot more subtle and give yourself a really wonderful lo-fi. A really wonderful lo-fi vibrato. convert that into a really beautiful chorus. Let's take off that harmonic filtering on the Yuna and get back to a more concrete sounding dry tone for this kind of like chorus engine. And this is where I want to go back to once again and for the final time because we never leave it in the first place. The beauty that is that low that lo-fi modulator. As a broken random chorus. Mm -hmm. 